media entrepreneur, became a household name in 1990 at the age of 21 by hosting the most influential show at the time, The Zhengda Variety Show, with over 300 million viewers. After obtaining her master's degree from Columbia University, Yang Lan returned to China and launched Yang Lan One-on-One, -on -one, the nation's first and longest-running in-depth talk show, which presented interviews with over 600 leaders from the worlds of local and international politics, business, culture, and entertainment. In retrospect, do you have any regret at all, especially when people, families of those soldiers would come to you to protest, even sometimes in a shocking way? Sometimes when we go back through history and we look at decisions, it seems as if it was all very orderly. But giving away your wealth also means uh, giving away part of your power, so-called. I have the ultimate luxury. I get to do every day what I love doing people I love it will treat me very well. In 2005, she launched Her Village, a talk show geared towards the Chinese urban female audience. Her Village has become a cross-media community to empower women, with a weekly TV audience of 20 million and more than 50 million social media followers. Dedicated to the improvement of women's well-being in both the workplace and at home, Her Village covers subjects such as flexible working time, access to breastfeeding privacy, and all-around emotional health. Yang Lan and her husband, Dr. Bruno Wu, founded the Sun Culture Foundation with the goal of promoting education and civil society development. One of its projects, called Growing in the Sunshine, provides migrant children with art education to aid in their development and social integration. The project has helped over 20,000 children. Yang Lan also became the first UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador in China and a global Goodwill Ambassador for the Special Olympics. She believes in building an open society by promoting cross-cultural communication and was the goodwill ambassador for Beijing's bid for the 2008 Olympic Games. Yang Lan also delivered the presentation on culture at the IOC session in Moscow. 700 years ago, amazed by his incredible description of a faraway land of great beauty, people asked Marco Polo whether his stories about China were true. And Marco answered, what I've told you was not even half of what I saw. In all of her work, Yang Lan aims to bridge cultural exchange between China and the rest of the world. Many people ask me, why do you have to do so many projects at the same time? Well, my answer is, if you can, why not? I'm honored and thrilled to be the first of many global trailblazers whose stories will be included in Makers as it expands its reach beyond the United States. But first of all, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my husband, Bruno Wu, who's right over there. Without whose love and unwavering support throughout the good days and bad days, I could not have traveled this far. Although I guess he secretly wishes that I could be a better ho ho homemaker, a better chef and a better nurse. But honey, you still have a hope. I may retire someday at, at the age of 80, for example. <laughs> well, if you ask me why I've had the courage to take the road less traveled, I think of my grandmother. At the age of 17 and with her feet half bound, she ran away from a rural village to escape an arranged marriage. And she earned her independence by working in a sewing factory in Shanghai and later became a small business owner. Surviving wars and the political turmoil during which her business and her savings were taken away by force, my grandmother showed me the strength and resilience of a woman. She always told me, you know what? We're stronger than we think. And I knew that if my grandmother could walk away with half band feet, I could blaze a trail on my own two feet and make a difference through the platform of the media, a platform that chose me at the beginning. As you just saw in my video, my life changed in 1990 when China Central Television chose me out of 1,000 young women to host a primetime TV program about traveling the world at a time when 95% of Chinese population didn't even have a passport. 
Much to my surprise, the show was an overnight TV sensation with more than 300 million viewers every week. And I was one of the first women on Chinese television expressing her own ideas and opinions without reading an approved script. I realized the urge of everyday Chinese to see the world from a different perspective and their aspiration to improve the lives of their own and the lives of their children. When I returned to China after completing my master's degree at Columbia University, my nation was going through an enormous transformation, politically, economically, culturally. I wanted to make a difference during this historical time, so I started the nation's first ever one-on-one -on -one interview show, and later the first documentary channel with my husband. I thought Chinese TV needed a more in-depth understanding of people, ideas, and the world at large. Through the show Yang Lang One on One, I introduced the Chinese audience to more than 600 leading figures from the fields of international politics, business, society, and culture. Ever since then, I've had the incentive to create something new, and I'm proud to say I've never stopped trying. After many projects and ventures, Sun Media Group, the Beijing Olympics, and various philanthropic efforts, I see that media is still one of the most powerful platforms for change and growth from within a society. And the internet is perhaps the most effective tool to promote a more equal partnership between our government and the civil society. TV may be crippled by censorship, but the internet is where content is king where the voices of the unheard can be heard. This has proven to be a priceless tool for China and for my advocacy work. For example, on my other uh, TV show, Her Village, I highlight social issues concerning women's welfare and well-being. Through its accompanying social media platform, Her Village can reach more than 50 million web audience to push for policy changes for women anti-family violence, privacy at workplace for breastfeeding mothers, for instance. Our empowered women's voices make an impact on government policies, even on legislation. My message to young people, to women, and the underprivileged is always very consistent. Let your voice be heard. And for those who don't have voices, I will add mine. Ideas and voices are very powerful. As Margaret Thatcher said, watch your thoughts, for they become words. Watch your words, for they become actions. Watch your actions, for they become habits. Watch your habits, for they become your character. And watch your character, for it becomes your destiny. What we think, we become. It is our responsibility to make makers of the future by encouraging voices of this generation and the next to be heard and so that more profound and sustaining changes can be made. After all, my grandmother was right. We are stronger than we think. And I thank Pele Center, thank you AOL, and thank everyone here.